if you recognize this, you're probably one of the 10 million plus people that got Golden Oak Kitchens installed in their home during its heyday. I was one of them. I had this in my home from time to time. I just want to let you know today we're going to show you how to do the ultimate makeover with a process called refacing. We start by taking off the doors and drawer faces, cleaning our cabinets, but let's get started and show you what we go through and I want you to stay with me all the way through because there are pieces of this that are kind of unique to refacing and we're going to show you every step of the way to make your kitchen brand new for thousands of dollars less than replacing a whole kitchen. Okay, we've now taken our doors and false face off of our cabinet and I bought some lacquer thinner from my local hardware store and cleaned the inside of the cabinet so that it was nice and clean. And we're getting now to the point where we're getting ready to do the refacing. The refacing part of it is going to be veneer. This is a paperback maple veneer and we're going to adhere it to this existing cabinet and I'll show you how to do that one as we go through the process. But this makes a great paintable surface. Now, we're using maple because we're gonna make this a paint grade cabinet. If I was going to make a real wood cabinet, say cherry, I would buy cherry veneer. And we're gonna make new doors and drawer faces and we'll get to that too. And you would make your doors out of cherry if you were doing cherry. We're making ours paint grade, obviously. And so I just wanted to talk about it. Now, there's one change we had to do here in the process of getting this ready. And I, I wanna talk about how to do changes also because uh, let, let's say we put a brand new countertop on here, a granite countertop a couple of years ago. We don't wanna replace our granite countertop, but we need to now update the cabinets. Any repair work or change work that wouldn't require the removal of a countertop could be done before you're refacing. And then when you reface everything, it all looks brand new. This particular piece right here, I had re to replace. We're getting ready now to begin our veneering. I wanted to show you first off what we're doing. Um, now I've cut this piece of wood, a uh, veneer. It's inch and a half. This is a three quarter inch face. And we want to lip our veneer back on our sides and our bottoms at three quarters of an inch to give it a, the appearance of being a three quarter inch thick face to our cabinet. So we'll, when we glue this on, now this is cut to size right here, you can tell. We will glue it on flush here. We don't need to have it lit back here because this is a false face. We'll put it on there. We'll, and then we'll bend and roll this with our little J roller. I'll show you what a J roller is when we get ready to do it. And we'll roll this back and glue this edge and underneath here and will have a new face on there. Now I'm going to show you how to cut veneer. It's really simple. The tools you need to cut veneer are very simple. Obviously your veneer, a good sharp utility knife, a small square, and then a good long straight edge and a tape measure. So let's go ahead and cut another inch and a half piece. We're going to need another inch and a half piece. Um, and so what I would do is I would take my tape measure and I would mark inch and a half and in the center and at this end I would take my straight edge that I, and I'm using this straight edge because it holds everything down. This is a, uh, you could use a, a, a metal straight edge if you want, but I like to have a piece of wood with a good straight edge because it holds my veneer down while I'm cutting. That's just a personal choice, but anyway, you line your straight edge up with the marks that you just put on there. So I'm right there where I need to be there, and I've moved right there. And then just take your utility knife and run along the edge of your straight edge 
Also, be sure to have a backer of some sort that you're cutting into. If you don't want to be cutting a table or anything like that, get yourself a backer sheet to cut on so that you're not uh, damaging anything that is of value while you cut through your veneer. And you just cut your veneer off like that and it pops right up. And there's your inch and a half strip. Now you can cut it to the lengths that you need by taking your little square and putting up against the edge of your veneer and cutting your veneer the length you want. We'll be cutting our pieces of veneer and you'll see this many times, but again, it doesn't take very much. It's very simple. Something to cut against, something as a straight edge, a little square, and a good sharp utility knife. We're getting ready to put the facing on now. I have taped off the line here where I don't want my glue to go beyond, and I've cut my strips ready to do, and we're going to be using a spray adhesive. Now there are several different brands. I like 3M, but it's just a spray adhesive, and we're going and a spray contact adhesive. Okay, now contact adhesive, you have to do both surfaces wait for it to dry just a little bit just follow the instructions that are on the can if you don't want to use a spray contact adhesive it also comes in a water-based paintbrush variety when i first learned to do refacing that was the way we put it on is we would paintbrush the contact adhesive on both surfaces wait for it to dry and then put it down it's the same kind of adhesive that they use for many different things but i like the spray because it goes a little faster so let's go ahead, and it's kind of messy, so I'm going to show you a couple of tricks to keep the mess under control. First off, when you spray the back side of your uh, facing material, spray it on a piece of cardboard. You need about, I think it says about six inches away. Let me read the instructions here. Now you have to wait for that to dry just a few minutes. And then, once it's, while it's still just a little bit tacky, again, follow the instructions on the can closely and you'll end up with your best application. And then line it up with the end of your frame. And stick it down. I talked about a J-roller. This is a J-roller. The J roller presses your facing material down solid so that your glue really adheres. And here's where it really comes into play on this where we have to go around the corner. Now we're just going to put our facing material flush with our bottom rail here and we're going to Stick that down good and tight, and then we're just going to roll that corner around like that with our J roller, and now it adheres underneath, and it creates our three-quarter inch border, which you'll be able to see more of when we start doing the other surfaces. Now, after we get all of the facing on, we're going to go back. I marked this so that I would remember know where it goes. We're going to go back and we're going to sand all, just hand sand all of these surfaces. And so all these little marks will come off, all of these little rough edges will come off, and all of our seams will be sanded smooth for our paint. I'm just going to go ahead now and we'll work our rest of the way around. I'll have you watch me put the uh, facing on and we'll just work our way around the corner and then we'll talk more when we get to the end panel.
I marked my center piece here with a three quarter inch mark here. I want my three quarter inch to be even with the bottom of my center there because I want it to lip over and have the same reveal underneath as I did on my horizontal pieces. Okay. And then we'll just work it around like that. And there we are. There's our centerpiece. Work those joints down good. You can take a putty knife if you've got a bit of an uneven and work your uneven lines in there. So that came out really good. That's just like we want to have it, just like that. And then we take our utility knife, just go along the top of our top rail here, and just trim off the excess. We don't need to be very exact because we're going to come back and sand at that edge and get that nice and clean. You can see how we do that. Now, if you had a countertop up here, you would have put that piece up tight against the countertop and worked your way down that way. You're going to take a file. file that veneer edge and we'll do the same thing underneath here and underneath here we'll kind of sand these edges and everything like that so they'll be nice and smooth and if there was any gap in here of any kind we would just put some wood putty in there just like we would if we were sanding a piece of wood because it is wood real veneer real wood veneer and so we would treat it the same way and then we would have a nice smooth surface for our paint okay let's do a couple more pieces then I'll show you how to do the end panel. It's the biggie. We're now getting ready to do the end panel. It's going to be all one big piece. And so this is very critical to do. I put some cardboard down. And you'll want it, if you're doing this in your kitchen, you'll want to tape off your floor and you'll want to tape off your wall and make sure that you don't get any of this adhesive overspray or keep it to the minimum because it's a little hard to clean up. It cleans up with lacquer thinner, but it's a little difficult to clean up. And so to keep your mess down to a minimum is very important. I'm going to use this as though it were the wall. Okay. Whoop, that looks like I missed the spot up top here. Let's. There we go. Okay. Okay. Give that a minute to dry. You want it to be not all the way dry, but dry enough that it adheres because the, the two. Uh, what makes it a contact adhesive is when those two covered surfaces stick together, the glue sticks to each other. It's not like a regular glue where you glue one surface and then stick your board on it. This is contact adhesive. Now, I marked my face frame here an inch and a half, or well, three quarters of an inch in from this edge, inch and a half from the edge. Inch and a half, or inch, uh, three quarters of an inch. The reason I did that was to line my veneer up with that mark so there we are we line our veneer up with that mark and stick it on there and now we'll gently roll it around the corner like I say this is because it sticks very aggressively, you want to make sure that you go very carefully and don't 
Make sure you just kind of work your way down the wall here or down the end panel here and don't just slap it up there on the edge. Work your way down. Keep the bubbles out. That's what you're trying to do is to keep this smooth for your paintable surface. Okay, now if you were doing this in a house and you had your wall here, you might want to start here with your this edge against the wall to make a tight seam and work your way out. And you could calculate your measurements to do it that way. Because now we want to come around to the front side here and roll our face frame piece around. So we're going to cut right here at our bottom rail line and right here at our I'm going to make sure we're stuck down good there. So let's take our J roller and make sure we're stuck good on that. We just rolled our veneer around the corner and we'll cut right there. And now we'll roll this edge around the corner. Just like we did down here at our bottom pieces and this piece, we'll roll that veneer around the edge and create our corner. And there we are. Now we'll take our utility knife, we'll trim this off, we'll trim this off, and we have a toe kick here, we'll trim that out. You can see with me pushing in there, you can see where we have a toe kick. We'll cut that out and we'll trim the back off and then we'll be ready to sand. And speaking of sanding, I came back here, I put a little wood putty in this joint so you could see what I was talking about. Being as it's a wood veneer, if you have a little gap, you just put some wood putty in there and we're going to get this sanded up when we get all done and we'll just sand it just like wood because it is and it'll have a nice joint. So let's, let me go ahead and get this all trimmed up and cleaned up and then you notice I didn't do this corner. We're going to introduce one other piece to show you about that. There's one last thing I want to show you on the facing part of our refacing. And that is, I, when we purchased these cabinets, we purchased this drawer section to go with it. When you put two cabinets together on a typical box modular in installation, you would have a seam between every set of cabinets. Um, we're going to take our facing material, our veneer, and we're going to put it over the top of that seam so that we hide that seam in our cabinet with our facing material. We'll start by screwing these two cabinets together just like they would be on a job. When I do my installations, I always clamp the cabinet together so that it holds it good and tight. And uh, I make sure my seam is smooth top to bottom. I made sure my cabinets are are even top to bottom and then I would take these inch and a quarter screws and I would screw from one cabinet into the other and that would tie the cabinets together. We've got our cabinets screwed together. Our uh, seam is nice and flush so that our veneer will fit on it really well. We're going to tape off our seam a little bit like this so that we don't get our adhesive all over the place. Um, again, like I say, the more you do this, the cleaner your refacing will be as far as your overspray and things like that. Try to keep as much of that clean as you possibly can. Just makes your job go a little easier. Also, we don't want to have any adhesive on the parts that we've already veneered because we would have to sand that off. So if we don't let it get on to begin with, it's easier to sand or easier to clean up. You can see we've already puttied our joints. We pointed that out. And after we get done putting this piece on, that is our next step, is to go back and sand out all of our facing and be ready for paint. But let's go ahead and get this last piece of facing on, just like we've done the rest.
we're going to go ahead now. I'll go ahead and finish trimming this up and then we'll come back and we'll show you how we sand this all out. Well, our facing portion is redone and we have puttied our joints and we're getting ready to sand and I'm going to show you how much sanding is involved. It's just really minor. So you just take your hand paper and you just sand and you sand your joint down smooth, which is already smooth because you made sure it was when you laid your veneer. So you're just cleaning up any putty and then making sure that the corners where we rolled the facing, we're making sure that that corner is smooth and doesn't have any sharp edges. Same like we would do on the outside here. We'll sand this outside corner like that so that it's nice and smooth and sand our joints so that the joint is all nice and smooth. We're going to sand along the bottom of the cabinet. Make sure that that doesn't have anything to catch on it. And then we'll go ahead and complete our sanding all the way around. And when we get all done, it looks like a new cabinet from the outside. All of our oak is covered. That was the original part of the cabinet. Our cabinet is now no longer an oak cabinet. It's now a maple cabinet ready to paint. So let me get sanded up and let's put some paint on this. Well, our refacing portion is done. We've got it all sanded, ready for paint. But before we do paint, we've got to build some doors. So let's build some uh, router table style shaker doors. We're getting ready to build our doors now. Um, I had to build me a brand new router table. I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. We built a router table a long, long time ago and made a little video called building a $5 router table. Well, I had to build a brand new one now because my other one wore out. And it's no longer $5 with the cost of materials. It's about $20. Still pretty cheap. But anyway, what we're getting ready to do now is to run our style and rail pieces with our uh, router bits that we purchased from Amazon. And we're doing a bevel cut style and rail set that will give us a modified type shaker door. I'll just have you watch me as I run through the pieces. We're not going to spend a lot of time on these doors because we've done a nice video on how to build doors and we're going to link you to that too. So let's build some doors. Well, we completed our door build yesterday. I would like to have a, provide a link to a video that we did using our router table to build a shaker door. That is exactly what we did on this and you saw us get started. The paint that we're using is Sherwin-Williams Cashmere Acrylic Latex. Um, it is a good paint. We talked to Sherwin-Williams when we were getting ready to paint and talked to him about the kind of thing that we were doing. They suggested this as a great cabinet paint. It smooths out real well and it has a good coverage. We had it tinted to a color that we like. Uh, it's a Snowbound is the name of it. It's a, a, a Sherwin-Williams color. And we've gone ahead and painted the back side of our door already. And we're just going to be painting the front side of our door. And then we have our cabinet to paint. And so we'll go ahead and go through the painting process now and uh, you can see it come together that way. We'll just you'd be using a nice nylon brush to paint our profile. And then we'll use our roller to do all of the flat surfaces.
We have completed painting our doors. We're going to paint our cabinet now. I'm I left my blue tape on just to help me in the painting of the inside of my frame here. We're going to paint that first and then just use our roller to go around the rest of the way around everything. So let's paint the cabinet. Again, like I say, we're using Snowbound Sherwin-Williams latex paint, acrylic latex paint. Wow, what a transformation. But you think it looks cool now. Wait till we get some doors on it. Stand by, it's coming. We're getting ready to put on the final pieces of our golden oak makeover. Here's our one door. I went ahead and put the drawer faces on and the hardware. We've got one more door to clip on and hardware to go on it. So let's get it finished off. using our handy dandy little hardware installation jig that we've showed you in the past. We're going to go ahead and still provide you a link to this. This is a such a tricky little way to put hardware on and have it be right every time that I want you to see this every time we do it because it's just such an easy way to make sure your hardware evenly spaced. Well, there you go. That is how you do a refacing. Now, I did a lot of these. When refacing first got popular 25, 30 years ago, I worked in the refacing end of the business for about a, a year, year and a half. A typical kitchen, a small typical kitchen, you could do in a week. So it's not a hard process to take golden oak and turn it into a brand new kitchen. And like I say, you can save thousands. We just showed you how on Woodworking with Wes.